Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, I've been talking and saying very favorable things about the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force lately because they actually seem to be issuing useful information to the public. And so there are some new um, guidelines about mammograms that I want to talk to you about today. Um, and the story goes back to 2009 when the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force issued guidelines that should have reduced enthusiasm for mammography. That didn't happen really, but what the task force said was that women in their 40s should not get mammograms. Women between the ages of 50 and 74 should have them every other year. No mammograms after 74. Now this fell short of telling the full truth about mammography, which is that it doesn't reduce the risk of dying of breast cancer at any age. But these new guidelines um, are much better, and uh, they contain very strong language about the potential risks associated with mammography and state clearly the minimal benefits. Um, for example, Dr. Michael DeFever, past chairman of the committee and current member, says, and this is a quote, mammography is good, it's useful, but it has its limits. It has harms, and we need to balance those benefits and harms. He went on to say, I hope that physicians will learn the science and not just have this knee-jerk reflex that annual mammography is the best thing for everybody from 40 until they die. That's stronger language. Now, the task force then looked at efficacy rates, and it said to save four lives, 10,000 women have to be screened for 10 years. Now, that covers women between the ages of 40 and 49. It gets a little bit better for women as they get older, but not a whole lot. If women in their 50s, you have to screen 10,000 women for 10 years and you save eight lives. 60s, same numbers, 21 lives. And then between 70 and 74, uh, 13 lives are saved. But um, there is potential for harm. And for the first time, the task force had really direct information about this. This includes the fact that mammography detects small abnormalities called ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS, which is not cancer and almost never progresses to cancer. Almost all women who have DCIS, however, are treated as cancer patients. They have lumpectomies and sometimes mastectomy, radiation therapy, aromatase inhibitors, tamoxifen. And so these women who don't have cancer, when you do all this stuff to them, that's harmful. All right, Treating people who don't have disease as if they have disease is harmful. The false positive rate is really interesting too, um, and this is the task force information. For women in their 40s, 100 biopsies results in just one case of invasive breast cancer. So we have 99 false positives and one uh, actual case. Um, for women in their 60s, the number goes down to 60 biopsies and we get one case, um, so 59 false positives. And biopsy is not always accurate. Um, I covered this a few weeks ago, but one study showed that when pathologists look at tissue taken from biopsy, their success rate in accurately calling it is about the same as coin toss. So I won't re read all that to you here, but you can go back and read that at the HealthBrace Online Library. Of course, advocates of screening and those who profit from it continue to insist that mammography saves lives, but the task force's review simply didn't show this to be true. The task force looked at all kinds of different studies and, rep and reported and said this directly. Many showed that there, were more, that there was more risk of harm than benefit. It also reported that there was not enough evidence to support the use of three-dimensional or 3D mammography. Francis Vasco, a breast cancer survivor and head of the National Breast Cancer Coalition said, Quote, the decades that we've spent drumming into women's heads and doctors' heads that once a year for a lifetime, early detection saves lives. The amount of money that's been spent marketing that message, it's very difficult to overcome that, but we need to overcome it. And um, in response to uh, this doctor stated that um, she was worried that women would become confused, um, this uh, gal, Frances Vasco, responded, we shouldn't be worried about confusing women. We should be worried about whether or not we're telling them the truth. And uh, how about that for a medical strategy? Why don't we start telling the truth? What a concept. Oh, but I forgot the truth is confidential or is co controversial. Uh, people keep telling me, Dr. Pam, you're so controversial. And to quote Dr. Peter Gotchke, I want to know when telling the truth became a controversial thing to do. It should be the thing we do always. All right. Now, while we're on the subject of breast uh, cancer and mammography and all that sort of thing, an increasing number of younger women who are diagnosed with early stage breast cancer are having mastectomies rather than lumpectomy or what's commonly referred to as breast conserving therapy. 
This appears to be a major step backwards for women. Now, I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but during the 1970s, Dr. George Kreil, who happened to be Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn's father-in-law, so apparently being subversive runs in the family when I tell you this story. Anyway, he took on the medical profession when he stated publicly that radical procedures such as mastectomy for early stage breast cancer patients he said this directly, fed the ego and bank accounts of surgeons, but was not in the best interest of patients. He argued instead for a lumpectomy, which involves removing only the tumor and a little bit of surrounding tissue um, with a local incision versus um, a radical mastectomy, which involves removing the entire breast, nearby lymph nodes, chest muscle tissue, etc. Now, thanks to Cryle's public statements and advocacy, and my gosh, was he swimming upstream. If you go back and read some of the articles, they were saying the same things about him that they've said about Esselstyn. It's ludicrous. The guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But he was persistent, and I think thanks to him, uh, he contributed a great deal to the mastectomies coming down. Uh, and this movement in the right direction was accompanied by the passage, also during that same time period, of informed consent laws that required physicians to tell patients that mastectomy would not extend survival. Uh, in fact, Dr. John McDougall got one of those passed. He was very instrumental in getting one of those pa laws passed in Hawaii while he lived there. Now, um, it's routinely violated. Uh, I think there are 18 states that have this law, and I would be flabbergasted if five women in the whole country have a discussion involving this information with their oncologists and surgeons prior to agreeing to surgery. But anyway, I think that one of the things that has caused this recent bump, it's not the only thing, but one thing is Angelina Jolie's very public decision to have both breasts removed because she carries the gene mutation that um, increases her risk of breast cancer. So I'm sure some women watch that and say, gosh, if she's willing to have her breasts removed because she has a higher risk of cancer, I probably should have them removed because I have cancer. And that's unfortunate. And research doesn't support this. A new study looked at outcomes for women under 40 who had either lumpectomy and, or mammography. And uh, I won't go through all the details of the study. You can read that in the article online. But the bottom line is there were no statistically significant differences between the groups in terms of survival. The researchers reported that, quote, while young age may be a poor prognostic factor for breast cancer, there's no evidence that these patients have better outcome with mastectomy over breast conserving therapy. Many other studies have shown similar results, and so then you add to this the, the treatment and the side effects and the lack of accuracy from mammography and biopsy and on and on and on. And we just have got to start inserting some reason into the discussion about breast cancer screening and treatment. Now, when I start talking about, um, I mentioned in Tuesday's broadcast, what am I supposed to do? Well, it, we don't have a good test for early detection of breast cancer. We just don't have it. And I think medical doctors should look their patients in the eye and tell them that. And say, look, if you don't want to die of breast cancer, I'm sure you don't want that to happen, here's what you do. You need a low-fat, plant-based diet, get rid of the diet, the dairy products, lose the weight. That is how you reduce your risk of dying from breast cancer. It isn't showing up at the mammography center every year or every two years. There has been no reduction in the death rate from aggressive and metastatic breast cancer since we started this mammography insanity. They're not going to give it up because it's a billion dollar business, but you can give it up by learning to just say no. All right, that's all for today. And actually for the week, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you on Tuesday with more news.